We've been in lockdown now for more than a month. Let's talk about going native. Hello fellow CNC nuts and welcome. In this episode we're taking a look at native units of measurement on our CNC machine. How to choose which one you use and more importantly how to switch from one to the other. Now, of course, there aren't that many to choose from. We start off with Imperial, based on the length of three barley corns placed end to end. Next, we have Metric, based on real-world physical science and mathematical calculation. Lastly, my all-time favourite, the width of a human here, based on stupidity. 125, 126. So, how do you choose your native unit of measurement? Well, it's really very simple. Simply pick the unit that you feel most comfortable using. There is no right or wrong answer here. <coughs> Patrick. Whichever unit you decide to choose is the unit you will need to configure your machine in and is the unit that will show up on the DROs when you start your machine. But there's a problem. What happens if you configure your machine for metric and somebody gives you a G-code file in Imperial? Now, in general, I have a policy of not running other people's G-code files. You just don't know where they've been. But if they are written for your machine and you're happy to run it, then there are two G-code instructions that help us out here. G20 and G21. And one of those two should be in the header of every G-code file. G20 changes the machine into Imperial mode and G21 changes the machine into metric mode. It doesn't change your native unit of measurement but when you enter those commands it will change the DROs to read either metric or Imperial and the machine will run as if it is metric or Imperial. Like I said it doesn't change what's going on underneath the hood but from where you and I sit, it makes it look like the machine has changed. And it only changes while you're running that file. If you power your machine off and turn it back on again, you'll be back where you started, back to your native unit of measurement. Let's give it a try and I'll show you what I mean. My machine is set up as metric, but if I type G20 into my MDI, you'll see that the DROs now change to Imperial and those measurements that were on there before have been converted into inches. If I then go and type G21, it changes everything back to metric. How good is that? That means I can run either a metric or imperial file on my machine and it'll just work. But be warned, not every controller is capable of running the G20, G21 command and not every post processor outputs the G20 or G21 command into the header of their files. But now there's another situation. What happens if somebody gives you a CAD drawing and it's in the wrong unit of measurement? If you're running metric and somebody gives you an imperial file or vice versa. Well that is where post processors come in. So what is the function of your post processor in your CAM software? Well, it carries out several important jobs. The first is it outputs some G-code at the start of your file that set your machine up so it's all in the correct mode to begin the cutting that you want to do. Second, it organizes the G-code into the correct format so that your machine can read it. But there's one other thing it does. It makes sure that the unit of measurement that's output by the machine is the one that your machine reads. So if you use a metric post processor, it will output all the units in metric format. It doesn't matter whether the file you opened is metric or imperial, the output of the G-code file will always use metric measurements and vice versa. So if you're given an imperial file and your machine is metric only, it's not a problem simply output it using the metric post processor and your machine will be able to cut it regardless of whether 
it understands G20, G21. And it's not only files that you're given. Sometimes I end up having to draw things in Imperial because that's just what it needs to be drawn in. It's far easier to draw something in its native unit of measurement than it is to go through and convert all those measurements. So in that case, I simply draw it in Imperial and then output it as a metric file using the metric post processor. Now sometimes it's unavoidable and you have to convert your drawing from one unit to another so that you can make modifications to it. For instance, if I have a drawing with say half inch holes and now I want to put 12 millimeter bolts through it instead, I would find it easier to change the imperial drawing to metric and then redraw those holes as 12 millimeter. Now your CAM software should allow you to do that even if it is that you have to scale the drawing. And the one thing you need to remember is that one inch is 25.4 times larger than one millimeter. So if you scale it by 25.4 in one direction or the other, you'll change from one unit to the other. If you're using Vetrix software, there's a really easy way to do it. So I'm gonna start by opening this existing file called eight inch circle. And as the name suggests, if I click on the circle and come down here to the bottom right hand corner, I can see that it's wide, 8 inches wide by 8 inches high. And if I go into the job dimensions, you can see that my material is 12 inches square, 1 inch thick. So if I open a job like this here and it's in inches, all I have to do is go back into the job dimensions and just click millimeters. And you can see instantly here my material size has changed to 304.8. The material is now 25.4 millimeters thick. And if I click on my circle here and read down the bottom here, it's 203.2 millimeters in diameter. So this drawing has quickly and efficiently been changed into millimeters. And if I want to go back, all I have to do is go back into here to set job dimensions and origin. Just change to inches. I'm back to a 12 inch square drawing. And my circle is now 8 inches in diameter. It really is as simple as that. And that's where I'm going to leave it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. Maybe learned something new. All that remains for me to do is to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Stay safe. Keep washing those hands and don't touch your face. Cheers.